Elko Wars Wacky Widgets, or EWW, is a program created by, by Elko War, which allows you to do widgets like you can do if you know the Windows program Rain Meter. You know, the OG Windows Rising tool that everyone in like the early 2000s to like the mid, be the knots to the teens, used the uh, Rice Windows and make it look and function pretty cool. So it's on the GitHub page, and you get an idea of what you can do. Elkor gives you an example using like a, a bar, which is actually a really nice bar, some annoyances. And then there's a setup, it's hard to see because of how narrow it is, but Elkor has its own vertical bar. Here's another vertical bar example. It's a cool like desktop overview kind of thing. Another one. Some bars, and some... And some menus, some other cool bars, a little pun there, another example I have, like this cool like bar kind of set up, and then this cool dashboard overview. There's also a documentation website, EW documentation, and it gives you a bunch of stuff on how to write it, but I'm going to show you how to write some pretty simple widgets right out of the box. So to get started, you want to then you want to go to well, you want to go to your dot config slash eww folder, which in this case doesn't exist. So we get to make it so eww go there. See, there's nothing there. So the first thing you want to do is create a new file, which you can easily do if I can type is make because the way you create a widget is you put them in a file called an eww.yuck because since the developer has a sense of humor that does not exist in the corporate world so we'll just create a folder.yuck I have a fancy plugin that should allow us to have syntax highlighting for the language the syntax used is a I believe it's a lisp lang configuration but it uses, otherwise uses GTK. So if you know a fair amount about GTK, you can make some pretty good apps. So first thing you want to do, let's create a let's create a window. So you do it. You do parentheses, open or open close parentheses, and then you do def window, and then we give it a name. Uh, I would jet, and then we can give it a number of different qualities, but the one that we must give it is we must give it a monitor. In this case, the monitor I'm currently using is monitor one, which is one downside to wacky, to EWW is you must define what window the widgets open up on. So you sort of end up annoyingly creating like two sets of widgets if you're trying to have a multi monitor set up, and I don't even, can't even imagine what it'd be like if you have like triple monitors or even like more than that, where you have to create one for every window. Maybe you just treat all monitors as one window, and then that might be easier. But then you have to deal with weird pixels positioning. Uh, yeah, that's beside the point. So just create one on monitor one. They must define the geometry. Just do it by doing that, and then do a geometry. I assume you could probably set it as a variable. I'm not sure, but you want to give it the x position. Now so this is a test. You could give. All you have to do is give it a string, and you can take like something like a pixel count or a percentage, because it's just like CSS. And then let's make it nicely. Organized doing Y. Let's also make it 20%. I think that's a good value. Then let's give it a height. Give it 100 pixels. Not sure what if percentages are allowed there, but you can always give it a try. And we declare the geometry. So now. This should work as a window, so we can go it. But if we want to run it, you do go EWW, open, and then we called it. Uh, what did we call it again? My widget, okay. So you the open a widget, you do EWW, open my widget. Widget. And. Looks like we uh, messed up the configuration a little bit. Ah, yes. 
Oh, okay. I see. Is we can't create a window with that is just empty, so let's create something for it. So if you know your uh, GTK programming, you got your widgets. So let's do empty and yeah, empty and let's put it in there. So let's do empty now. If we run either of my widget, empty, huh? Oh, I think I know I did wrong. Is we just we need to give more information so. Like, need to say, oh, it takes an array, and the array contains things, maybe that will make it work. Give, alright, I guess we need to give empty some things, so, let's give it a box, and let's give it an orientation of horizontal, and it will too be empty, let's see if that works. And we have a little widget. It's right there. Very boring because it's just using default CSS. But to close a widget, do you close my wid widget? Or you just do an EWW close all, which will close all widgets as specified in the config file. So that one, be a little careful. All right, so now we've created that little widget. Let's go back and edit it a little bit. So I wonder a widget that can to do something. Well, let's, let's, something simple we can do is, you, you know how when you change the volume or whatever, on a system a little pop up appears and allows you to adjust the volume? Let's make one of those. I can use some code that's from the uh, bar code, but I have it off to the side, so I'll just write it and explain to you how it works. So let's keep the name scheme. Let's call this vol slider and then so vault slider now it'll take okay, let's give it a, a you know horizontal align align alignment which will make it center and to the box we'll have what are we going to call a metric has a label that is volume a value call it volume volume and on change we'll run pomixer just set volume and then we give it some angle brackets that just tells it that depending on the value, put that in the uh, brackets. Parentheses match up. So then now we need to make the widget called metric. So I'll just copy the code because it, I didn't write it and I can just explain it to you. So what it is, it's a widget that contains a box and has another box that has a label in this case it's this label so it's going to be called volume and then the scale a scale is basically a slider so as we set the minimum and the maximum an active not sure that this syntax does and then values the value which in this case is volume on change be the on change which is this variable which is this so now we have that now we just need to set volume here value so let's do a def poll which is something that just pulls so volume and we set an interval basically the interval tells it how often we want it to pull like how often to update you can set one millisecond it's a little excessive but not quite sure what a good timing is for that they want it to run some, and then we want it to pull. So what we want it to do is uh, run a script that gets the volume, which... So the command we're going to run is quite straightforward. It would be pomixer dash s get volume. That's it. And so that would be the widget volume. So quit. And we could do open our widget. And that's not what it's supposed to look like. Oh, 
well, it is a slider, it's just a very small slider, so let's uh, edit it some more. Let's give it a larger width, like that 4 pixel, 420 four pixels, because I totally planned that out. I got a nice little slider now. This is it's using the default uh, gnome slider, so I'm more afraid of like, how much volume is being changed, but you kind of get the idea. However, something really cool you can do is that you can also set CSS. Close our widget, and let's do it. And the way you set the CSS is you do an eww.scss. I have a CSS file. Now I'm just going to quickly select a bunch of CSS and try to explain it. I can. Yeah, but the basic idea is you should have a CSS rule that this means everything. It will all unset. That will basically make it so that all the default, everything in your theme will not affect your styling. So you can have custom themes. However, if you wish it to match up with your GTK theme, do not do this. And all this stuff is also kind of comes from that default bar. So now if we run the widget, we get this nice thing. And even if we adjust the volume, it goes up and down with our slider. So it's just a nice simple widget that you can use. You adjust the CSS, change its position, and let's go over some of the things that EWW can do. Uh, some things you can use EWW for scripting and whatnot. So as I said, we have the options for it. Great thing to know is you can run EWD as a demon or daemon, depending on how you want to pronounce it. One is if you don't want to scare the uh, normies in the in Starbucks. I, I bet you already do that by just running art or something like that. But you can set a config option. Because what you want to do is, rather than have like a massive folder, this of maps of eww.yuck that has all your things in it. What you could do is you could branch some of the separate folders and then you can set, using the dash c or dash dash config option, you can then set a path to that config so you can have separate widgets. Debug, you see you have logs, help, princess information, you start for restarting, puts up the version, you see close close all, daemon, debug, get, you set, not sure that does a graph, uh, help, Introspector for GTK debugging, kill will kill the daemon. Logs. Open is for opening a window, however, open many is for opening multiple windows at once. However, as it says here, that eventually open will just do the same thing as open many. Ping will ping the EWW server if it is available. Reload will reload the configuration. It automatically reloads the configuration as you go, so it shouldn't have to do that, but just in case. Updates for updating things in Windows, list all the windows. Oh yeah, another cool thing about EWW is it works in both Wayland and, as well as uh, Xorg. And actually, you can see I'm running Hyperland right now. Just to prove to you, yes, it does work in Wayland. So now we have a fancy widget that opens and you can set the volume, but is it really that useful? So in that case, I have something all nice and set up. So let's see, where is it? I have misc widgets, so I'm gonna move that. Try config, eww, paste that there. And let's take a look at some of the things. So let's close you. So now let's go into CD misc widgets. Let's look at the eww.sc. Actually, it basically looks the same thing, but I want to look at let's look at volume pop up. And let's also open volume pop up two. Okay. So this is something I copied from actually this person's here, how they got the dashboard. But I could explain how this works. So you have some variables, this just defines where this like temporary file goes. Basically the idea is it says that this file tells, if you search for it, it can be like, hey, it's running. And then dot config, YouTube misc widgets. This is the working directory, the CFG directory. 
This is just be like get EWW. Forgot what which does. Then this checks to see if the EWW daemon is running. If it is, run it. Otherwise, and then sleep for a second to wait for it to boot up. Then I have two functions. This this one's for running it on second monitor, but this is from the main monitor. But set the config option to the config. Look, set right here. Open many is left in there. Volume pop. -up. And then all right, so run EWW. We'll open up the widget. But here's where the fun logic comes in: is we see if the file exists. If it doesn't exist, create the file. Then we get the current active window in Hyperland using this little aux script. And then depending on which monitor we're on, zero being the second monitor, one being the first monitor, I wish I could change that, but that's just how it is. We run either one of these functions. Then we launch this script, EWW2, as a separate process. Otherwise, if the file does exist, we kill this script and then we spawn it again. So let's now go to this, the second script. The script looks kind of the same, but it's, instead it sleeps, it removes the file, and it tells the config to close all the windows if each one of them succeeds. So the, how this works is when we run the script initially, it'll pop up the middle menu. Then after one second, it'll then close the window. However, you want to adjust the thing the script so yeah however you want to see it you want to keep the widget open while you're adjusting the volume and then have it go away when you're not done this is what it does essentially so let's i just need to edit my config slightly because i don't have the right path variables set up now i have set the commands to run so actually i can just show you we run volume pop up It'll pop with a little widget, and then let's see. Ah, yes. This is why you test everything before working it, because you start getting into weird things. You have to fix right on the spot, and now run it. There we go. All right. So if we now run volume pop up, it'll pop up and go, because it'll spawn the process since I bound it to the volume keys. You cannot change the volume, it goes up and down. However, it doesn't work for muting, unfortunately. You see, increase it and decrease it however we like. That one millisecond pulling allows it to be instantaneous. And we stop updating it. It's supposed to go away. Um, that's why you test things before performing them on camera. But I've gotten it to work. If you actually uh, put these somewhere in your path, it might actually work properly. Unlike just trying to quickly hack it together. Yes, but if you enjoyed the video, please like, comment, and subscribe. Follow me on Mastodon, and have a nice day. Minix out.